What does a neuro-ophthalmologist do? And under what conditions should you consider making a visit with one? In this episode of OcuTalk, Dr. Victoria Williams will be telling us all about neuro-ophthalmology, what a typical exam looks like, and more about certain conditions like ptosis, or droopy eyelids. Dr. Williams? I want to talk to you. Not now, later. No, now. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for a brand new episode of OcuTalk. My name's Nick, and today we have a very special guest joining us from Warren, Michigan, Dr. Victoria Williams. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, good to be here. Well, excellent. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for taking the time out of your day to speak with us. Uh, Dr. Williams, uh, before we get started today, I was hoping that maybe you can introduce yourself to our audience. Maybe tell them a little bit about your background and your specialty. Sure. I'm Dr. Victoria Williams. I'm born and raised in the Detroit area. Um, I stayed pretty close to home for training. I went to Michigan State University for both my undergrad as well as my med school training. And um, I graduated from the College of Osteopathic Medicine there. Um, I did my um, residency in ophthalmology through Beaumont Health. And then I did my fellowship in neuro-ophthalmology, oculoplastics, and orbital surgery through Michigan Neuro-Ophthalmology in Warren. Well, excellent. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Dr. Williams. And again, thank you for taking the time out of your day to visit with us. Uh, so, Dr. Williams, uh, I was hoping maybe you can let us know, let our viewers know a little bit about uh, what being a neuro ophthalmologist is all about. So, neuro ophthalmology means that I deal with diseases that affect the optic nerve as well as the nerves that control eye movement. Um, also the nerves that control eye elevation. So, I see a lot of people with double vision, droopy lids, and vision loss. Oh, well, perfect. Thank you for that information, Dr. Williams. And what kind of patients do you uh, typically see on, on a typical day? So typically I'm referred patients that have unexplained vision loss, whether it be from a stroke, both in the, the brain or the eye. Um, it could also be from a tumor or other disease processes that can control the eyes that or control the muscles and the nerves that control eye movement. Well, thank you for that information, Dr. Williams. And I was hoping that maybe you can uh, walk us through what happens during a neuro uh, ophthalmology exam. So during a typical neuro exam, I evaluate everything. I do formal visual field testing to see if there's any visual field deficits. I do optical coherence testing, also called an OCT, to evaluate the optic nerve layer. Um, I look at visual acuity, color vision, stereo vision, and then I also do a dilated eye exam. Well, awesome. Thank you for that, Dr. Williams. And I'm sure you kind of went over it a little bit, but what kind of conditions does a neuro-ophthalmologist typically treat? So probably the most common things that I see are what's called ischemic optic neuropathies or um, basically strokes to the eye. And there's various causes, be it from diabetes, hypertension, certain medications. Um, I also see people with um, vision loss, whether it be a blind spot in their vision from a tumor um, I also see people with double vision for various causes, um, including muscle diseases like myasthenia gravis or other um, nerve-related or muscle-related type issues. Oh, again, well, awesome. Thank you for that information, Dr. Williams. And so for our discussion today, we were hoping that maybe you can tell us a little bit about ptosis or, or droopy eye. Can, can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure. So ptosis is the fancy way of saying droopy eyelids, um, and there's a lot of different causes for that. Some people, we kind of divide them into a few different categories. The first one is myogenic, which is typically something you're born with where maybe the muscle that um, keeps the eyelid up wasn't developed properly. Um, there's also more what we call aponeurotic, which is the acquired form, with, which is basically age related where the muscle that keeps the eye up gets stretched or that can happen mechanically with um, eye surgery like after cataract surgery or if you wear contact lenses or have to put drops in for glaucoma where you're constantly stretching your eye open, that can stretch it. Um, there's also neurologic issues um, such as the nerve palsies like I've talked about where there's a tumor or an aneurysm that presses on, for instance, the third nerve that can cause your eye to be completely droopy. Um, there's also things called Horner syndrome or myasthenia gravis, which are other disease processes that can cause um, double vision or sorry, um, droopiness. And then there's always trauma. You know, if there's some type of laceration or damage to the lid that can cause droopiness. Well, perfect, Dr. Williams. Again, thank you for letting us know about ptosis or droopy eye. Uh, so what are the causes of, of ptosis and droopy eye? 
So, you know, I would say the most common cause is aging, but like I said, you could be born with those. Um, you could also develop things like tumors or aneurysms. I will say most commonly in my clinic, it's either age related or it's related to um, the underlying disease processes like diabetes, hypertension that affect the nerves that control the muscle that keep the eyelid up that just, you know, cause damage to that, those nerves that cause damage to the muscle. Well, perfect. Thank you again, Dr. Williams. And I know you just talked about it a little bit, but what are like some of the signs or symptoms that someone should be on the lookout for that maybe alert them to be like, oh, I should probably go see Dr. Williams? So the biggest thing is if you get double vision and a droopy lid, that's a red flag. I mean, having a droopy lid is not always concerning. Like I said, it could be age related, but if it's something new and you're notice, noticing that your eyes don't move properly, that's, you know, a key reason to maybe go see an eye care professional or even go to the ER. Um, also, if you have any type of pain with your droopy lid, um, you're going to want to see an eye care professional. Uh, well, thank you for letting us know about that, Dr. Williams. And um, are, are there any risks involved and in, how serious is this? So if you're, if, if you're not born, well, for babies that are born with ptosis, obviously those, they should be worked up. But if it's something that you develop, I mean, there's a risk that you could have an underlying muscle disease that maybe you weren't aware of that needs to be treated. Um, there's also a risk that you could have an aneurysm or you could be you know, having a stroke. So those are reasons why if you're noticing, especially if it's just one eyelid more than the other, you really should see your doctor right away. Absolutely. And they hear from Dr. Williams, make sure you see your doctor right away. And Dr. Williams, I, I know we went over the causes and uh, what signs to be look out for, but how is droopy eye, uh, eyelid diagnosed? So when I see a patient with droopy lid, I always do a thorough you know, line of questioning as to how long, um, if there's any pain, um, if they were born with this. I also do a thorough exam to look at the eye muscle function because if the muscle isn't functioning well, it may have been something that's long standing. Um, but if I'm thinking that this is more age related and maybe we're gonna start talking about doing some surgery, I'll do some testing with visual fields to look at their superior visual field where I actually tape the lid up and see if it improves the visual field. Um, and that's again, like I said, more for surgical planning to see if that would actually benefit their vision. Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Williams. And um, I, I'm wondering, I know we've talked about like babies uh, getting this and, you know, it's age related. Uh, is this something that can actually be prevented, though? So definitely the age related causes can be prevented. I mean, if you're a heavy eye rubber, you may want to see your doctor. Maybe there's some underlying allergies or something going on that needs to be treated. Um, avoid stretching the eye. So if you wear contact lenses or you have to use drops every day, like say you have glaucoma, try not to aggressively stretch your eyes open. That'll help prevent things. Um, if you do have things like diabetes or hypertension or high cholesterol, keep those things under control so that you don't develop issues with blood flow that could affect the nerves that would then affect the muscles that could contribute to um, droopy lids. Well, again, perfect information, Dr. Williams. Thank you for that. And so how is it treated? So depends on the cause. I will say um, for the regular age-related cause, it's surgery. I typically do what's called a levator advancement where I reattach the muscle where it's supposed to be and it helps keep the eyelid open. Um, but if there's an underlying issue such as a stroke or an aneurysm or a muscle disease, it's important to see someone so that we can test for that properly and then treat that properly um, with medications and or other surgeries. Well, perfect. Again, thank you for that information, Dr. Williams. And um, are there any new developments or new technologies in the field that we should be on the lookout for right now? So there is a new drop called Upneak, which is actually very exciting. It treats, um, it treats ptosis. It treats a small amount of ptosis. So if someone has a completely closed lid, this is not the drop for them. But for someone who maybe is thinking surgery and is maybe not quite ready for it or isn't a good surgical candidate, this is a drop that keeps the eye open just a few millimeters for several hours throughout the day. So for someone that's going to a wedding or has a photo shoot or something like that, where they're worried that their lids may look half closed or they may be self-conscious, this is a perfect drop for them to use as needed just to elevate their eyes a little bit. Well, awesome. Again, thank you for that information. Dr. Williams will definitely be on the lookout for that. And uh, before we leave today, was there anything else that you'd like to tell our audience about? 
No, I mean, this was great. Thank you for having me. I will say, though, if there's ever anything different about your vision, don't hesitate to see your eye care professional to figure it out soon so that you can get treatment right away. Well, there you have it, everyone. Dr. Williams, uh, make sure you go and uh, heed her advice. Everyone, that was Dr. Victoria Williams from Warren, Michigan. Dr. Williams, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me.